Good morning, cultists. Welcome back to another Unbalanced Breakfast with Goody Loops. We join the notorious Buckethead gang as they deliberate and plan their next heist. Heist? Um... Adventure? Or I guess more misadventure is more appropriate. But anyways, um, Fabrosi, Sibyl, and Losa are doing all the planning while uh, Fane here is sulking in the back. Uh, Fane is of course uh, jealous of Fabrosi, who is the ladies man of the group, despite being undead and a filthy degenerate. But anyways guys, that's enough sulking, that's enough planning. Let's commence with our quest. Everyone, to Fabrosi. Converge. Alright, so in the last episode, we uh, got to the north eastern uh, section of the Reaper's Coast. At least I think that's what it's called. It still says Fort Joy, but people keep saying Reaper's Coast, Reaper's Coast. So I'm assuming this is the Reaper's Coast. I could be wrong. But anyways. So we got here, and I realized that we might actually be going the right way. Which in RPG terms means that we're actually going the wrong way. Because the uh, way that we play RPGs is of course you go the wrong way, i.e. the side route, and then we do all the side quests, and then you, of course, get back to the main quest. That's how you're supposed to play it. So let's actually go down the wrong path. Um, Fane, if you could uh, blast those traps out of our way so that we don't get inundated by them. And apparently there's another one over there. Fane, please do the honors. a boy. Who knew Fane would be our trap disarmer, right? Holy crap. Or at least, the explosive mine traps anyways. But before we move down south, I'm thinking maybe we should talk to some of these guys. Maybe we won't talk to Gareth, uh, Exter, and uh, oh, Augrat and Potato. But maybe we'll talk to these side characters and see what they have to say. And also, let's go ahead and loot these dead bodies. Herbrosi's hunkering for some uh, dead human flesh. Or at least, um, some bone anyways. Some human femur. Also, let's do these guys a major favor and uh, make it rain to put out this fire. I don't know why they've just kept this fire going. It's really weird. You guys should really put out this fire. And I've noticed that rain in um, DOS 2 is rather useless in comparison to the rain in DOS 1, but oh well. All right, Kurban, what do you have to say? at the body of his dead comrade, tightly gripping his weapon in a cold fury. Magisters, I'll kill everyone that I see slowly. At a boy, that's how you do it. Whoa, looks like these guys have the same idea of uh, looting their dead bodies. All right, we've got a, t a tomato, a pepper, a garlic, and a couple of carrots. Holy shit, if you can actually find a human femur with some like meat on it, we could throw that into a pot and baby, we've got a stew going. Holy shit. All right, Jules? So the Reds think they can butcher us like hogs and get away with it. My blade's going to taste their blood before the day's out. I swear it. Well, it's a little dark for a Jules Verne novel, but I mean, whatever floats your boat, buddy. Whatever floats your boat. So far, no human femurs, which is kind of a shame. And I think I saw a green copper ring in there or something? Uh, Losa, can you make it rain again, like, properly this time? Put out the fire, please. Good grief. Alright, no, apparently there's some really stubborn fires. I don't quite understand how they're staying lit. This is really weird. But we did get the green copper ring, which I don't know if it actually does anything. <gasps> Sabil, look, we've got a human foot for you. Fantastic. And another dead seeker. Lovely. With no femur. Unbelievable. And a well-worn chest with a note with divine order seal and what appears to have been a poison... Gas trap, maybe. Let's find out. Magister Zire. Zire. Ziwi. Zibu. Magister Zibu. Ensure that you leave a little something behind in case any stragglers come back. Make it hard for the seekers to breathe, if you know what I mean. As I suspected, that was not, in fact, poisonous gas, but it was actually. Um, fumes from, uh, breach, uh, it's so not brie, fumes from, um, blue cheese, fermented, of course, in athlete's foot. It was blue cheese that was grown on an athlete's foot. 
not like just an athlete's foot, but an athlete's foot that had athlete's foot, which is, you know, the fungus or whatever. Um, I regret laying my eye on you with your tentacle beard thing. Very weird. Only Cthulhu is allowed to have that kind of thing. Those magisters are gonna pay. I wanna see some gut spill for what they did to us. Uh, I'm paying right now for looking at your face. Where are your eyebrows? Good grief. Duggan? I pray this goes well. I'd hate to think what would come of later if we don't pull this off. Okay, sure. Whatever you say, man. Why don't you just tell her that you love her? And look, we found something. Good to have you with us. Alright, so far, all the people that we rescued before, um... Don't seem to have anything interesting to say, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna hold off on talking to the main guys. Okay, uh, it's locked. Sibyl, can you do the honors? And we got what did we got? We got a couple of resurrection scrolls. Fantastic. We've got a fortify scroll. We'll give that to Fane. A silver cup. Um. Which one of you guys need... Alright, looks like medium healing potion. Split that up. One for Losa and one for Sabeel. And then we'll give the large healing potion over to Sabeel. Fabrosi, you can take the rest of this crap. a boy. Alright, so as I was saying, um, I'm gonna hold off on talking to the primary guys, the main story characters. Because I'm kind of scared that if I talk to them, they'll immediately take that as a cue to charge dick first into the enemy uh, ranks and get their asses handed to them. And then of course I would fail the main quest and it'll be a whole thing, I'd have to redo the, everything from scratch. And no one wants that. Much less myself. Okay, so we did get this, which I'm assuming helps us make a small fire or flame rune or whatever. Great. Anything else we picked up? Whole bunch of crap. Fantastic. Let's go down the side path and see what comes of this adventure. Holy crap, holy. Can you imagine the bacon we could get out of this thing? Holy shit. Although its face is extremely disturbing. Well, it's a good thing I don't really um, enjoy eating pig face. Alright, pig. Let's see what you have to say. Um, I'm sorry, do I know you? Wait, what? Ask the pig if you have met before. You don't remember. Goodness. One moment my flesh was flaming with cursed fire, and the next you had eased my pain. Aha, you're the pre-cooked bacon that got away. I can't tell you how grateful I am for your kindness. Now I'm just trying to get used to life as a pig. It's not so easy. I never did enjoy truffles. Well, I know we might not like it, but there's actually a lot of money to be had in uh, truffle hunting or truffle farming. So why don't you give it a try? And uh, since I gave you this idea, I of course claim all royalties. Ask how she came to be cursed in the first place. Well, I can trace it all back to Bracchus Rex, of course. Many of us opposed his reign. Few dared to speak against him, though. A few of us wizards took the chance, though. We figured if we spread the word of his deeds, we might encourage enough people to come together, find a way to take him down. Yeah, that never works out for anyone. But we underestimated the cowardice of our comrades. All we succeeded in doing was being branded heretics and brought to Bracchus Rex's court. Nice. The results were horrifying. A double curse turned into pigs and set aflame for eternity. I like not being on fire, so I don't want to complain too much about the pig part. This Bracchus Rex is really a man after my own heart. Holy crap. Ask if there's any way to return her to her old form. I'm not sure. I have prayed to Armadia, but she offers no answers. Did she say Armadia? Tell her about the Sanctuary of Amadia. Really? Hmm. There must be a shrine there. Wait. I thought you being here for like a thousand years, you'd know about this temple by now, no? If anyone can restore me to my previous wizardly self, it's Amadia. Good grief. You really did not do a lot of exploration while you were on fire, did you? I'm so grateful for this news. I'm going there now to seek Amadia's blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay, okay. Take it easy, P 
pig. Good grief. So that got updated. Um, we told the pig about the shrine. We should return there to find out whether or not the pig was granted the mercy of Amaria and made human once more. Wait, 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 pig, I forgot to mention. There's vines and ladders. You have to climb up vines and ladders to get to the... It's gone. What the shit. Alright. Fine, let's go to Amaria's tra uh, sanctuary and see if the pig was in fact able to scale the vines and ladders. Of course, this place is empty as shit now. Um... Wait, someone claimed these broken source collars? Leia? You still here? Why is she still here? What the hell? Like, when Gareth was missing, uh, missing? When Gareth was uh, missing, she was constantly complaining about how Gareth was missing and bitching and moaning and shit. And then when we got Gareth back, she was like ecstatic as shit. And then now Gareth has gone um, to the beach to attack Lady Vengeance or whatever. And now she's staying behind? What the hell? She's just sitting here, heaving her ma massive bosom up and down and doing nothing. Unbelievable. Alright, Ben's still here, I think. Yep. Still got his bucket head. Fantastic. And then we've got Fetter, who is still a pig. I see. Thanks for sending me here. It's quite beautiful, isn't it? Uh, I don't know about that. It seems a bit... It's, it's a bit of a fucking um, uh, mess, isn't it? I've prayed to Amadia real hard, but I'm not sure it's done much good. Still, a wizard trapped in a pig's body. Any ideas? Tell her to keep praying. At some point, Amadia is sure to grant her wish. That sounds extremely uh, stupid and not at all productive. Say she should give up. If Amadia was interested in helping, she would have done so by now. That is also not very productive. Suggest she get in the pool. That seems to be the only productive uh, option here. So sure, get in the pool. Oh, what a grand idea! I'll try that. What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is wet, soggy bacon. That's the worst that could happen. Have you had wet, soggy bacon before? It is a fate worse than death. Fredder? So, what happens next? Do you think? I don't feel any different. At least the fountain is nice, right? Okay. Um, do we maybe talk to the statue? The goddess's tears still stream freely, and all is quiet by the tranquil pond. Bow your head, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and call to her. Um, okay, that apparently just brings up the travel menu. The goddess's tears still stream freely. How about we walk away? How about we show Amaria Fabrosi's glorious ass? and then make her weep tears of joy. Of course, that's what happens to me in real life, but um, so far that doesn't seem to be working for Fabrosi. All right, uh, maybe Fabrosi is too much of a degenerate for uh, Amadia to take notice. Sibyl, are you, I think, is Sibyl the elven uh, assassin less of a degenerate than Fabrosi? Amidst the placid little pond, the face of a goddess lies half submerged in the water. Rivulets stream from her deep-set eyes like endless cascades of sunlit tears. You feel peaceful in her presence, soothed somehow by an intangible comfort. Savor the moment and take your time to look over the statue. Okay, this is a lot more promising. It seems that Sibyl is in fact less of a degenerate than Fabrosi. As you gaze upon her loving face, you find yourself drawn into a trance-like state. A voice seems to reach you from within your mind and from the furthest reaches of the stars. Its whispers caress you like a breeze. Listen intently, expose yourself to this unearthly voice. Decide to see where this leads. Force yourself back into reality. Um, not sure I like the idea of Sibyl exposing herself, especially with her weird, disgusting elf body, but sure, let's do it. The voice grows stronger, like a breeze picking up. What will whispers become words? My children, my children. Gone are my children. Dead are they in the cradle I have brought. Commiserate with her plight. Few fates are worse than hers. Observe that it's news to you that even gods can be stillborn, if a goddess she is. Sneer that it sounds like she was a terrible mother. Both of these sound terrible. Let's commiserate with her plight. A feeling of indescribable sadness assails you. It feels like your heart merges with the spirits, torn together by a coil of thorns. Um, that doesn't sound pleasant at all. My child, 
my child. Weep with me for the mother who has lost. Weep with me and bathe in the tears of Amadia. Without a word in absolute privacy, let her know you too have much to weep about. Yeah, sure. You feel the goddess's presence surround you. Feel her nestle you tenderly like a mother. Share the fear, a fear that you'll never be free, that your eventual enslavement will be as permanent as a scar on your cheek. Confess that deep down you dread the end of your quest that when everyone you want to slay has been slain, you'll still lust for blood and hunger for death. Um, that sounds really dark. I don't know if she'll uh, really appreciate this, so maybe we'll go with this? The intensity of her embrace deepens. Never since the unremembered days of childhood have you been so enveloped in maternal safety. My child, my child, I love you. My own, my own, I will guard you. Wander where you will and cherish the kiss of Amadia. Uh, wow, can you talk a little faster, please? As suddenly as it came, the voice is gone and you wake from its presence as if from dream filled slumber. The pond now shines with an inner. Whoa. Light. And standing in its waters, you feel rejuvenated, pure, as if born anew. Whoa, what is this? Blessed stream applies healing. Uh-oh, that's not good. Fabrosi, Fane, you guys okay? Oh no, they're taking... Oh shit. They're getting hurt. Get out of the blessed water. Oh no. Damn, whoa, who's this? Fetter, who appears to have the cobra um, symbol on her back from G.I. Joe. Hello, nurse. Say hello and ask who she is. We know who she is, isn't don't we? She's the former pig lady. Oh, I'm a wizard. And I was a long time ago, too. In between, I was a pig. And I was on fire for most of that time. <laughs> it's a long story. But I think I'll leave it in the past and look to the future instead. Wait, she's a trader? Ask a trade? Of course. Whoa, what have we got here? Hot damn. Looks like we've got some pretty, pretty sweet stuff that we could buy from her. Mail splitter? Okay, okay. This is very promising. War cane. Holy crap, holy. And tremor, which increases fire resistance and dodging, and also grants battering ram. Hot diggity damn. Alright, so I know Fane has a Bye. necklace. That grants him bartering. So, Fane, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna have you uh, lend that to Fabrosi for a second. And then we're gonna do some major trading. And I apologize in advance if this takes a little while, but I'll try to speed through it as much as we can here. Fetter, we're back. We're willing to trade now that Fabrosi is a little better at trading via magic styles. Let's go with the mail splitter that first caught my eye. Um, Dwarven Staff? No, no, no. I think... What does Losa have right now? Grand Staff, which does poison. I'm actually kind of wondering if maybe we should get another staff? No... No, it's fine, I think. Yeah... Yeah, it's fine. Let's just keep the poison staff for now. Um... Because it does also give her intelligence and health. The, uh, bow we don't really need. There's a couple of daggers I think Sibyl might, um, find interesting. Acid and plus one to single-handed. Not that great, but fair enough. And Fane, we've got a purging wand and a magical stone wand. We could give you a better air wand. Or even a war cane. Ooh, that sounds nice, doesn't it? Herbosi, let's get you new boots. And otherwise, I don't know if there's much else we can actually get for Brosi here. Kettle Helm. I'm starting to think that maybe we should let go of our title as the Buckethead Gang. And instead actually look towards getting us proper gear. Like, getting us proper helmets and shit. Rather than just trying to maintain our, um... Infamy as the Buckethead Gang. I'm just gonna buy all this shit. I think we should have enough money and uh, whatnot to offset what we're 
gonna spend here, I think. Uh, will this benefit you? A little bit. Sure, let's take it. And what about the magic, or say, mage sandals? Yeah, let's get that for you as well. Rawhide scale boots. Not super useful, uh, ish. But plus nine to HP is nice. It basically offsets the physical armor. Fine fists. Finesse. Would that benefit you? Mm, not by much. I don't think that's worth it. Spellcaster's fingers. This could be nice. Maybe? I don't know. Um, but otherwise, I think that's about it. That's a lot of money. Even with uh, Fabrosi's. Oh, wait, no. Okay, I see. I see. There's also the attitude bonus um, that she has towards Fabrosi. I understand. I can see clearly now the rain has gone. Alright, um... I think that's about all we really want to buy. I don't know... Oh wait, the rawhide armor. Yes, this could be useful. The light helmet? I don't know, I mean... Should we abandon our mantle as the Buckethead gang? I'm starting to think that maybe we should. Considering that um, we are sacrificing a fair bit by not wearing proper armor, right? So maybe we should? That's kind of what I'm leaning towards anyways. I don't know. I don't know what these drained wands do. But let's go ahead and sell Migo's breastplate as well considering that it gives, me, gives us a lot of money. Gawain's armor? Fuck off Gawain. He died like a bitch. Um, cro copper ring? Yeah, we'll sell that crap. Mage sandals, we'll sell that too. And the skull amulet. Yeah, sure. And that's, whoa, almost matched up. Holy crap. Kettle helm. Actually, we've got the mask of strength. Which doesn't provide as much physical armor. But, mm, poison resistance. I guess it's not really useful for Fabrosi. Pyrokinetic, not that useful for Fabrosi either. Hmm. I, 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 I don't know. I'm a little torn. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I really don't want to let go of our mantle as the, um, Buckethead gang. But I do feel like we're limiting ourselves somewhat if we don't, uh, you know, wear the proper gear. So, maybe we should? Hmm. Maybe. We'd be losing 600 gold. Um... This can go to someone who uses magic, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. And if we if we want to, we can keep our, um, you know, our reputation as a Buckethead gang. Um, but then we, if we buy these, we'll at least have the option to uh, change that up later on, right? Yeah, let's do that. Although... Mm, maybe I don't need this. Strength, pyrokinetic. Yeah, sure, we'll sell that. There we go. Boom. Hot diggity damn. That's a lot of shit, and I also wasted a lot of time. I'm sorry, guys. All right, Sabil, let's get you your magical combat dagger. A very nondescript name. And you can keep the light helmet if you want. Uh, Losa, I'm going to give you the uh, magical cap. Um, Fabrosi, you can use that if you want. But in the meantime, Sibyl, put on your leather slacks. Um... Fane, let's give you the mage leggings. Considering that uh, Losa does have better mage leggings than you do right now. Leather boots. Leather shoes, rather. That's for Sibyl. And, um, mage sandals? Yeah, for Losa. Nice! I like a good, uh, gladiators, a pair of gladiator sandals on a lady. And we'll go with that. That's good. Spellcaster's fingers. Profane. Fantastic. Losa, can you... Oh, wait, no. I don't really want to get rid of the uh, gloves of teleportation. And for Sibyl. I think that's good, right, guys? Yeah, I think we're good. Just want to make sure. Just double check everything. Laced scale. I don't give a crap about that. That's all rubbish. 
And actually, you know what? We're not quite done here yet. I'm sorry guys, I don't mean to dawdle like this. But I'm gonna sell all the shit that we don't need anymore. And that will be this, that, that, this, that, this, that. And the long shank, Griff's potato peeler. We'll keep some of this other stuff. Should we keep Griff's potato peeler? Bit of a memorabilia item, isn't it? But, eh, I mean, whatever. I don't really care, to be honest with you. There we go. I think we're good. Bye. I think we're good. All right, let's move back to the, um, the area where we were before. Which is the abandoned camp. And then move down south. And let's have our camera angle this way. That way we can see um, whatever's coming up. And then maybe we can prepare if we see something coming up, perhaps. And we missed a penny bun mushroom. What the hell, guys? Unbelievable. That's a health potion right there. Good grief. Hope you guys didn't miss any um, Amadia uh, fly Al Algeric Algernon thing. You got a fish bone. Nice. What is this? What is... Whoa, whoa! Slain the Winter Dragon. Soul Shackled. It appears to be tethered to a couple of bone totems. Crap, okay, let's try to interact with it. Winter dragon. So far, it doesn't Earth seem to be interested in ripping us to shreds. The dragon stares you down with flinty, intelligent eyes. He tries to speak, but his jaw is bound tightly by the same thick chains that shackled him to the pillars. Hot damn. Holy shit, how do we see its eyes? It's like covered with like horse blinds or whatever. The most badass horse blinds ever. Or the mo worst horse blinds ever? The purged dragon? We met slain the winter dragon who was bound by chains to two pillars. How do we know what its name is? It didn't introduce itself to us exactly. Did it? Alright, Fane. Let's have you warm this thing up. See if this works. Let's ignite it. And then maybe we can actually clear out some of the uh, ice while we're at it. Well, I'm glad it didn't anger the dragon. I realize now that was a huge risk to take. Unreadable glyphs mantle this ancient pillar. Braided through thick iron wings, source-infused chains bind the dragon tightly. Okay, great. Apparently it's really cold here. Um, let's not step into the ice. Fane, could you please unleash a couple more rounds of ignition, if you don't mind? Get this place warmed up. Or at least get the ice melted so that we can traverse the area without worrying about slipping and cracking our noggin open. Especially you and uh, Fabrosi. Although, you know, the buckets do, uh, do provide ample protection. Just maybe not as much protection to, um, against, uh, you know, weapons and whatnot. But against the uh, ground, Accelerating it uh, towards you at uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, then maybe, but otherwise, we need, might need to actually start wearing some proper helmets and shit. I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm ready to let go of my um, reputation as the Buckethead Gang. Okay, uh, Slain, I'm assuming we come back to you later. Uh, I see a little something over here. So why don't we. Guys? Guys, you guys are still chilled? Okay, great. Can you, um, can you climb up this vine, Fabrosi? Holy shit. Look at that. Whoa! Hot damn! <laughs> that was a blast seeing Sibyl just zip on over to a Fabrosi. What the heck is this? Ah, oh, shit. No, this looks like the Source Temple thing. Oh, no. Well, at least the outside of the Source Temple puzzle was okay. It was the inside that was an absolute clusterfuck. Ah, jeez. Okay, quick save. And let's find out what this is. The stone gargoyle trains glistening agate eyes upon you. Its jaws creak open, raining dust as it begins to speak. Okay. You are not Bracus Rex. A lie. Of course you are. Admit you aren't, but ask if you may enter here anyway. Show the gargoyle the ring of the Source King. 
Um, if I do this, am I gonna lose the ring? Because they kind of want to keep... Hold on to it. Because they think it's part of the, um... Quest to uncurse all the Brachus Rex's uh, gear or whatever, right? Artifacts of a Tyrant? I don't want to take any chance that we're gonna lose the, uh, the ring. So let's just... Be nice to it and ask if we can enter. You may. Um, that was easy. You may stay forever. Each lock opens only with a soul. And how many of those does one mortal have? Uh, you'd be surprised. Maybe you'll find some in the garden. Or maybe your soul will help the next adventurer through. Uh, it called you mortal. Tell it that your mortality is up for some debate. Mysterious. Uh, okay, sure. Let me enter. Have at it. Great, thanks. Well, that was easy. The gargoyle's maze. Um, a gargoyle at the entrance of a maze told us that the locked doors need to be... Oh, within need to be opened with souls. It intimidated... It intimated that we might find some inside the maze. We should think carefully about which doors we open with these souls. Okay. Alright, well, let's take a break here. And come back tomorrow to explore the gargoyle's maze or whatever. Which is looking a little ominous. But hopefully it's not going to be as bad as the source temple puzzle. Which was absolute fucking batshit crazy stupid. But anyways. Alright, so for now, thanks for watching and have a good breakfast.